With SHOT Show 2018 right around the corner, there's a lot of companies that are teasing us with new products that they're going to be announcing or even just showing prototypes of at SHOT Show. However, one company that I've been paying really close attention to because of what they've been teasing is Elite Force and Umarex with their Agent K license. So in today's video, I want to talk to you guys about some of the things that Elite Force has teased and why I'm really, really excited about one of them, as well as some speculation into things that I think that they could also be showing off at SHOT Show, and why 2018 is an excellent year to be an Agent K fan. What's up guys, my name is Lane, and welcome to the BB Warrior. We're here to help you have a better time both on and off the airsofting field, and if you enjoy videos like this, you know, if you enjoy our informative discussions about the industry, you know, like we're having today, or our honest and independent reviews, would love it if you joined our community by one, hitting that subscribe button down below, but while you're at it, make sure to hit that bell icon next to it to get notifications when I post new videos every Tuesday and Friday here on the channel. Now, the first gun I want to talk about that was teased is their MP7. Now, you might be saying, Lane... Why does this matter? They already make an MP7. They make two versions of the MP7, in fact. They make one from KWA and one from VFC. So why is this important and why are you talking about it? Are they adding a new color or something stupid like that? Some sort of gimmick? Well, if you look at the photo that they posted, if you look inside of the handguard of the MP7, those are battery connectors, which means this is going to be an AEG. Now, this is going to be speculation from here on out. However, the reason why I'm really excited about this is because it can have a good FPS on it. The ones that are already made by Tokyo Marui and Well, which I'm excited to see how they do a gearbox, if they're just going to copy the TM design. But Tokyo Marui can only have such a high FPS because of the laws in Japan. So Umarex has the potential to make this, you know, that 340 to 350 range, which is more than likely because of the size of the MP7. They're going to want that CQB FPS or that one jewel FPS for international sales. But if they wanted to, they could probably make this in that 380 to 400 FPS range. Now, the CQB FPS is more than likely, and we don't know anything about price point because the only teaser that we have is a photo I'm really excited about this. In the last six months or so, I've really been into SMGs and SBRs, and I've typically been more of a long gun person. So I'm really excited to see, you know, how this performs, what the price range is going to be, if it's just going to be like one of their competition guns or things like that, or if this is going to be like a really well-built airsoft gun. And as well, because these will be able to get into the U.S. because of, you know, the licensing rights with H&K and Umarex, it'll be easier to get a Polar Star or Wolverine MP7. I have had my heart after one of those for so long, but once Bingo closed, I kind of gave up hope on it. So I'm hoping that, you know, one of the shops that really specializes in custom HPA units like Airsoft Junkies is able to jump on this and put an HPA unit in it. But the next gun I want to talk about, which is going to be more important for you guys that do impressions, is their 416. Now, this isn't the regular 416 that they've been doing for a while. This is the HK 416A5. So there are a few differences with the A5, which are really only going to matter to those of you who do impression kits. However, on the inside, that's where we're seeing the most change. Now, the internals for their 416s are going to be the Avalon internals. So you're going to have the upgraded gearbox, the upgraded hop-up, things like that, which I'm really excited for. And I know we talked about this in a previous video already. However, VFC has really, really been stepping up their game in 2018, which is why I've been talking about them so much on the channel. I'm really excited to see what VFC comes out with this year. And there's a lot that they haven't talked about already that we'll probably learn at shot. Now, a gun that I want to talk about, which again, this is just speculation and me giving my prediction for SHOT Show, I wouldn't be surprised if they talk about the VP9. Now, the VP9 is a gun that they've been working on for a while, and I'd imagine what's taking so long is, if I remember correctly, the VP9 is a striker-fired pistol. I could be wrong about that, but I'd imagine that's what's causing some of the delays, that a striker-fired pistol in Airsoft, they're just harder to make, and it takes a little bit more time. However, I got to feel one of the samples way back in 2016 at Faded Giant, and... It felt like the grip on that gun was made specifically for my hand. I didn't want to let go of it. I was ready to buy it right there. 
I mean, this was like the most comfortable handgun I have ever felt. It's probably because of the finger grooves, and I'm typically not a finger groove type guy on my handguns. However, I fell in love with it. I'm not the biggest fan of VFC's gas pullbacks. They are getting better, but I still like other models, but I'm very excited for this, and hopefully they talk about it, because I've wanted it for just so long. Now, two things that I think that they're definitely going to talk about at SHOT Show are, one, the Glocks that they're coming out with. It would be foolish of them not to talk about these at SHOT Show. Um, hopefully they give us a set-in-stone concrete release date. Um, they're Originally, a lot of people were talking about Christmas. That didn't happen, obviously. And now February's the kind of thing that I've heard. So hopefully, hopefully these come out soon because I really want to get my hands on them for some reviews and testing. But besides their Glocks, which hopefully they talk about some new models they're going to do, I know a lot of people want to see like the newer generations, like the Gen 5 Glocks be made into Airsoft, or, you know, some different models, like the G18, maybe some of the smaller, you know, subcompact style of guns. But something else I think they're going to talk about, which they've already released, but not a lot of people have been talking about, is their competition-grade MP5s. Now, these are made by Saima, so they're pretty good for their price range, and they're in about that $160 price range. However, they do have a few models that are coming out. So they currently have the A4 version, and they also have an MP5 SD, which I personally I love the aesthetic of that gun. So I hope that hopefully they talk about those and hopefully they bring in some new life to MP5s because now that they hold the HK license, they're the only people that can make licensed MP5s. And we just really haven't seen that many of them for a while. I mean, they got rid of them. Hopefully they bring back like the MP5K. I know that they're not making those anymore. And hopefully they just make some, you know, some higher end MP5s. I'd love to see you know, like Ares Tackle It, or maybe even VFC. The only VFC MP5 I've seen I wasn't very impressed with, so hopefully they can throw the Avalon gearbox in there and fix that issue. But I hope that they talk about some new models. I know a lot of people want to see an MG4 from Elite Force because, as far as I know, they don't make any LMG to this date. I just don't think that's going to happen, personally. I think that it's just going to be way too pricey of an endeavor, and not a lot of people in the U.S. airsoft market like to spend above $450 on their gun. I've just noticed that after $450, they're just rare. Really, the only gun that does really good after that price range is, you know, Polar Star units, custom guns, or like the G28, which is a super special edition type of gun. But I want to know what are you guys the most excited about, about seeing from Elite Force, Umarex, and H&K this, um, excuse me, this SHOT Show. I know that Glock isn't an HK gun, but I know they're going to be talking about those at SHOT Show because everyone, every single retailer, and every single player wants to get their hands on them. You know, except for the people that own Tokyo Marui Glocks. But that is going to do it for this video, guys. Again, make sure to let me know what you are most excited about at SHOT Show, and would you like to see a prediction video for SHOT Show? Maybe you'll bring a few people on and do a nice collaboration live stream. Who knows? If you enjoyed the video and this was your first time here, I'd love it if you joined our community by hitting that subscribe button down below. And while you're at it, again, make sure to hit that bell icon next to it, even if you're already subscribed, so that you stay updated when we post new videos every Tuesday and Friday here on the channel. Make sure to follow us on social media. Links are down in the description below, as well as where you can pick up a BB Warrior patch to help grow the future of the channel, help me buy better equipment to make better, higher quality videos for you guys. This has been Lane from the BB Warrior discussing why 2018 is going to be a great year to be an H&K fanboy, and I will see you all next time.